circumference. Let's go ahead and start in our notes. Circles and circumference. This is one of my favorite lessons to teach. Um, even though if you're looking at 7-4, the top says integration geometry. Do you guys see that? So this is pre-algebra. What do we do with geometry today? So I hope you guys understand that the maths, the different types of maths relate to one another. And so when I'm talking about circles and circumference, which is geometry, I'm going to talk about algebra because they have to fit together. And when you're in geometry in a couple years, you're going to have like a whole chapter on circles. Like on circles. You're like what can, how much can you talk about a circle? There is so much you deal with with circles on a theoretical level, like up here, and like a practical level. But all of us here need to be thankful that there are people who understand circles. Because if you don't understand, or no one understands circles, there's a lot of problems we have today uh, in this room, in your house, coming anywhere to and from, you're going to have some issues. So circles are important, and understanding them is even more important. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is on your um, notes, I want you to draw me a nice circle. Make it about eight of those lines big. So about, it doesn't have to be exactly eight, but just make it big enough because we're going to write in it. So draw me a circle. About eight lines thick. So it's not like a small one, but it's not this huge circle. And then uh, we're going to start talking about parts of it. Okay, once you get that circle, I want you to draw a little point right dead center in the circle as best you can. I will do the same. Just make it a big, nice circle there. And what I want you to do is I want you to label it. So like with an arrow, I want you to put center. I hope that makes sense. The center of the circle is a point right in the middle of the cent uh, right in the middle of the center of the circle imagine that but there's a little bit more to that it's a little bit more complicated um, when you get into geometry one of the first things you're going to learn is this they're going to teach you this what is a point what's a point well isn't a point just a little dot okay but a point is actually a little bit deep well it's a lot deeper than actually drawing a point yeah it's any point and see, I can't define point without using the word point. But it's a point space. That point should not have a width or a length. Should not have any width. But can I draw that? No. I have to try to. Um, I, the best way I can draw a point is like that. But it's actually big, too big. Anyway, um, let's look at these. This circle here. This circle is actually made up of an infinite number of points. So what I mean is this: all around this circle. Every time I click, or every time I tap on that circle, that's a point. How many points do you think are around that circle? Infinite. Infinite number, okay? Which is important because I'm going to get to some concepts where you need to understand that. All right, there's also another thing here. There's a distance from the center of a circle to any point on the circle, and that is called the, does anyone know? Radius. Radius. It's called the radius. And we're going to... We're going to use R, the letter R, for radius. So radius is any, it's any segment that connects the center of the circle to any point on the circle. Let's see if you guys are paying attention. How many radius, uh, ra radii, or radii, it's one or the other, how many radii are there in a circle? Infinite. Infinite. Why infinite? Because if there are infinite number of points, there are infinite number of radii or radii. Okay, so that's nice to know. There's another thing you need to know. It's the distance from one point on a circle to another point on the circle that crosses through the center. Does anyone know what that's called? Diameter. Yes, diameter. Good, some of you knew it. Diameter. Diameter. And sorry, I know it's a little bit running into that arrow, but diameter. Hmm. How many diameters are there in a circle? Infinite. Infinite. Okay, good. Can anyone just by looking at this, looking at this diagram, tell me how does the radius and diameter relate? 
Or do they? Like, yeah. how do they relate to one another? They both go to points. Okay, they both go to points. So, like, radius goes from center to a point on the circle. Diameter starts with one point and ends at another point on the circle. But there's something about the two that relate every single time in a special way. Sorry? Uh, not necessarily. Well, actually, the yes, you can kind of say a bit, a little bit more. It's a number two. Yep. Two points are always connected. Okay. Yep. Kind of. I think. Ready, guys? You know the diameter. What's the distance from here to here? What is that called? From this point to the center? That's one radius. What's from here to here? Another radius. How many radii form a diameter? two of them. So this is what I want you to put. The radius, the radius is half the diameter. Does that make sense? If the diameter goes, if the, I should say, if the diameter has two radii connecting together, then the radius is only half of that diameter. How's, how's another way to put that into uh, words. So the radius is half the diameter, or how do you say that a different way? I would say, yes, I'll put it like this. The diameter is twice the radius. I'm not saying the same thing, just in a reverse order. The diameter is twice the radius, okay? You need to know that. Very important. <laughs> So how many radii fit in a diameter? Two. Two, okay. That's, that's an important fact here. Okay, there's one more thing I want to uh, list, and it's that word circumference. Does anyone happen to know what circumference means? What is circumference, cool? Good. I'm going to label it like this. So circumference. If you can't see, it's up there. The circumference is a distance around a circle. So basically, you can think of it, what's the perimeter of a circle called? Circumference. Um, but why is it different from our normal polygons? What's the difference between a polygon and a circle? Polygons and circles, how are they different? Circle doesn't have like, points. Well, they have points, straight but lines. they don't have it's just Same. one line. OK, it doesn't have any straight lines. You know polygons like a triangle, three straight lines? How many lines, straight lines, is it? just a circle? Just look at the circle. None. None. Um, it's just a big curve. Right? It's a big curve. So circumference, as Cole said, you, you actually put it very well, well. Circumference, I want you to know as the distance around a circle. I was telling the other class a couple other uses of um, the prefix circum. Have you guys heard of circumnavigate? Mm -hmm. What is that talking about? Circumnavigated. Go, or around, I go, around something or either go specifically circumnavigate around the world. around the world. Have, who, does anyone know who the first person to circumnavigate? Magellan. 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 Magellan I, you know, now that I asked the question, Magellan, did he actually make it? No. He crew passed crew away, but his crew did. So we'll give it to Magellan, but his crew's probably like, why does he get the credit? Anyway, so yeah, yeah. Are they? Yeah. yeah all right. Um, so the people have circumnavigated. People still circumnavigate. Have you guys heard of the word circumspectly? Nope. Okay. Does anyone know what the word spectacle or spectators? Yeah, it means watching or seeing or observing. And you know that the Word of God actually says we need to be wise and walk circumspectly. What does that mean? That in life. You are not walking just looking at one thing. You are actually looking around as you walk around. You're looking for pitfalls. You're looking for temptations. You're looking at what God has to say for you, what people are in your life. You have to be looking around because if you get too like narrow focus, you won't see the attacks come in. So this is walk circumspectly. So do we use the word or the prefix circum a lot? Yeah, yeah we should, or it should be at least a part of our vocabulary because we have it today, circumference. All right, I'm going to actually emphasize one part. Uh, draw me another circle, not as big, maybe like half the size of the one you did. And I'm just going to label a couple things here. 
Just a couple things here. Okay, can you guys, um, in that circle, draw a diameter? Just draw a diameter. And you're like, Mr. H, should I draw it like this, or should I draw it like that, or kind of like diagonal? Which one's right? Yeah. All of them. So just, what I do to draw dia diameter is I draw the center, and then I draw a line that crosses through that center, not a Pokeball. Because someone brings it up, and I just, no, it's not. Okay. All right, don't catch them all. Not today, not right now. Okay, everyone label this as diameter. Okay, label your diameter as diameter. <clears throat> There's a super, super important number when you deal with circles. Um, does anyone know what that number is? It's, it's a special number. We use it all the time with circles. It's like key. Nick? What do we call that number? Pie. Cherry pie. You warm up cherry pie. You get a scoop of vanilla ice cream, put it on there, it melts. Ah, cherry pie with ice cream. Oh my goodness. We actually have to eat pie. Okay, anyway. Well, that, enjoy it. Enjoy it. All right, anyway. When I'm talking about pie, it's, it's a Greek letter pie. That's what we're talking about, Greek letter pie. And the symbol we use for pie is uh, this right here. And there, I mean, just make it look kind of like that. I'm not picky on that symbol. But you are going to see that symbol a lot, Are so you need to know. Learn? Oh, yeah. Here. Right now. Oh. <laughs> like right this moment. Oh, actually, oh, in just a few moments. I know, like the first two moments. Good. You need one more after. Three, four, four, five, four, five. All right. I, I'll tell you a story about that number in just a moment. I'll tell you something about seventh grader, actually. I'll wait. Okay, what you do need to know is that we are going to use approximations. You see that's not like an equal sign? It's called the approximate symbol or approximately, and some of you have already said it. I just want you to know 3.14, okay? Is that exactly pi? No. That's because I put not only the approximate symbol, but pi is a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. Do you remember what kind of number that would be? What type of number? Right. Non-repeating, non-close, non-repeating, non-terminating, uh, irrational number. That doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. It just means you can't write it as a fraction exactly. But there is an approximate fractional form. There's an approximate. It's not exactly, but we use it. Yeah? Isn't it 22 over 7? 22 over 7. Yes. I need to memorize both of those. I think you can. Okay. It's not that bad. Um, speaking of memorizing, um, right now, at this moment in time, there's a computer, and it's actually a, like we would call it a supercomputer. It is right now trying to figure out what pi exactly is. And as we speak, it is figuring it out. It is not getting there yet. It's getting closer, but it's not getting there yet. Why? Because when does this decimal number actually end? Never. Well, so far, right? Because they're going to keep going, maybe, but my bets are never. Um, we're going to use these two numbers because these are still helpful for finding out what piece of info information we're going to get. What's the point of finding out the um, I think it's just to see how you can make it, if possible, into a rational number. And there are applications for like, like, um, like engineering or design or computer technology that would maybe help us out. It's all theoretical though. Unless they find it, it cannot help them. So they're trying. And uh, a lot of smart people are trying to what figure it out. Like, so um, researchers, researchers, like, researchers, yeah. Yeah, so and other world. So well, why would you devote your life to doing this? Well, they're not just sitting there like calculating. They're, they're doing other things while they do this. Okay. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, so I have a circle right here. This is my wedding ring. And you've been on circles today. You've written them. But I look at the circle here. And every circle, whether you're talking about a wedding ring or a tire 
or just whatever piece of machinery that uses those circles, they have a special relationship with that number 3.14, and here it is. Okay, do you guys remember how I made you draw the diameter? Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do is I want to find the distance around a circle, okay? That's like the whole point of this lesson. You want to find what's the distance around a circle. Well, how in the world do you do that? Let's do this real quick. If I, and you can mark this on your paper, just pick a point, like draw a little slash there. If I try to measure the circumference of a circle using the diameter, so here's one diameter, be like right there, okay? That's how, long, how far the diameter would go. If I try to do another one, somewhere like right there. It's not to scale. I, I didn't measure it, but this is what's going to happen. So how many diameters do I have to so far? Two. Two. And then I do another one. How many do I have? Three. And a little bit left. Do you know how many diameters I use to go around that circle? 3.14. Three and 14 hundredths. Oh, I got one. Exactly. Two? Oh, okay. uh, then your diagrams are maybe a bit too short, but that's okay. It's, a, it's just a diagram. It should look like this. And no, they're not accurate because I see this one shorter than those. But if I had a real measurement, I would figure that out, and it would come out to one, two, three diameters, and a little bit more than that. That's for every single circle. In fact, can you think of any spherical objects, anything that's like a ball? Well, do you guys do you guys play basketball, tennis balls, soccer balls? Anything else bigger? Think bigger. Bowling balls. Okay, bowling balls. I'm talking. There you go. Earth, Jupiter, the yeah, the sun. If these are spherical objects, they have to relate in this way. Now, I go to. Uh, I go to uh, a website, and I, if I want to find out, you know, what's the, what's the distance around the moon? Has anyone gone to the moon and measured it out? No one has. They've gone to the moon, but no one's taking the time to just, like, sit there with a ruler or get those instruments. That can, no, they can't do it. So what they did was this. They used 3.14, yes, pi, and if they know what the diameter is or even a part of the diameter, then they can figure out the whole distance around it without having to figure it all out. You can also do that with the Earth. How do you find the diameter of the Earth? So this is how you would do it practically. I mean, like, if you didn't know all this stuff. You would drill a hole straight down into the Earth until you got to the other side. You'd get this giant measuring device and figure, yeah, you'd die, by the way, on the way there. And then you'd probably destroy the Earth by doing that. But you do it. You do it, and what happens is... You do that, and you could measure that, right? You could do that, but there's easier ways of doing it, and it's using pi. You don't have to do that. In fact, uh, I, I remember Mr. Hubbard did something, I think it was the eighth graders. You can measure the moon by being here and just looking at the telescope. You can measure the moon by using the measurement you see and pi. And you can figure it out. You can figure out that distance around it. That's why this stuff is practical and very useful, because when we start doing different things with... The, the, the universe or the planetary systems and all that, or on a small scale with like a little bowl, a little ball, a little bearing, that's going to be helpful. So big and small it works. It's cool. Anyway, this is what I need you to know from this little um, diagram here. There are two equations I need you to memorize, including these numbers, okay? So, oh no, what do we do? Memorize them. And if you don't memorize them, they're there. The circumference equals... 2 pi r. Yeah, just write it down. How about that? Just write it down. That's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is circumference equals pi times diameter. Uh, what are you talking about? Let's look at the bottom one first. What does D stand for? How many diameters fit around a circle? 3 and 14 Yeah, 3.14? So don't you do 3.14 times the diameter, and you would get the distance around that circle? Okay, so that one I get. But this top one is kind of weird to me. How in the world do I go from this to this? They're the same exact thing. Uh, raise your hand, raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hand. How do I go? Because I get they both have pi. One has D, the other one has R. One has 2, the other one doesn't. How in the world do they come with this? They're making this stuff up. Annie? Close. Say that again. The diameter 
is. Okay, look here. You see this two and this r. What's twice the radius? Oh. So if I knew what the radius was, don't I have to multiply by two to get the diameter? And then I multiply by pi, got my circumference. What if they give me the diameter? Then I just multiply by 3.14, got my circumference. Both of these are going to be very useful. Okay, You're going to have to use both of them. And you're going to have to use either the decimal form or the fractional form of pi. So we'll go through a couple of examples. Yes, sir? No, they'll call me if, when your mom's here. Here? No, they didn't. We would have all heard it. Someone would have told me. Okay. But uh, anyway, let's look at... Let's look at example number one on page 342. Let's see how this actually works with the problems we're dealing with today. Example number 1a. And uh, it says find the circumference of each circle described below. On a, they did not give you a diagram. They only said the diameter is 8.25 centimeters. Use a calculator. That's up here. You actually just powered it up when you went to lunch. You're good. So what you're going to do is you're going to use one of the formulas. Now, what piece of info did they give me? The diameter. diameter. So the diameter, which we're going to call D, equals 8.25. The diameter equals 8.25. What was it? Centimeters. centimeters. Thank you. So does anyone know what a, how big a centimeter is? Can you do it with your fingers? OK, if an inch is like, let's say that, a, a centimeter is two and a half times less than that. So it's like that. It's very small. So 8.25 centimeters, um, that's, that's not very big. It's maybe like that. Okay, not very big. Which form of the circumference formula, 2 pi r, or circumference equals pi times the hammer, which form am I going to use? Which one do you think? The first or the second? Second. Why second? I mean, okay, they gave me the diameter. So you're going to put this in for the diameter. OK, good. So I'm not going to use this one. OK, but which version of pi am I going to use? My options are 3.14 and 22 over 7. 3.14. Why 3.14? Good. If you get a fractional diameter or radius, what should you use? The, for, uh, de well, the decimal form of pi. If they give you a fraction, you should use the fractional form of pi. Does that make sense? OK, so I have here C equals 3.14 times 8.25. Oh my. Yes, ma'am? Um, does it give me the um, diam diameter? Diameter? Mm -hmm. The radius one. Yep. You don't have to. You could technically use this one as well. But um, I just use the one that they give me, and then it shouldn't be too hard. But you have options. Okay, so you're going to multiply 3.14 times 8.25. So I'll put that over here. So go ahead and do that. Let's figure it out. Um, by the way, and I'll tell you why we do this, these examples are actually harder than your actual homework problems. You're like, why would they do that? Because if I train you to do the harder problems, can you do the easier ones on your own? Probably. Um, and it reminds me of, so I played a few sports, but basketball is my, my favorite. Um, in basketball, my coach used to do this in high school. When we were doing layup lines, you know how some of you do layup lines for drills or uh, pre-game? He had a big pad, and as we were coming up for a layup, he would smack us with it. Not hard, not like hurting us, but he would smack us with it. Why in the world would he do that? Yes, ma'am? Because in the game, you're going to get pushed around. Yeah, so if I'm going up for a layup in the game, and I go up and I get smacked, am I used to that? feeling of getting smacked and, and maybe have some experience with that so I can finish it. Because a lot of people, when they get smacked, uh, they're not even going to get a chance at the and one or making the basket plus a foul shot. So he, he would hit us, and sometimes he'd hit us here, sometimes here, 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 and we have to just get used to getting hit. Because if I get hit in the game, and sometimes they do this on a foul, they tap you, and you just go for the layup, and you make it, and you get that and one. So in practice, I was getting hit with a pad every time I made a layup, or every time I went for a layup. Do I do that in the game? Do they, I get hit every time? No, but I'm used to it now, and I'm, it's easier in the game. So in practice, which is homework and this, I tend to do a little bit harder so that when it comes to the, the quiz and the test, you're a little bit more prepped up. So that's my philosophy. 
Hopefully it works. Four times five. 20. Good. Five times one plus two. Seven. Five times three. Eight. Zero. Two times four. Eight. Two times one. Two. Two times three. Six. Zero. Zero. Don't forget those guys. Those are going to throw our whole answer. Eight times four. Yes, good. 32. Eight times one plus three. Eleven. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. That's sloppy. Unacceptable. Do it again. Okay. Zero. Fifteen. Uh, why am I losing this? Uh, 10, no. 2, 8, 9, 5, 2. Yay! 2, 5, 9, 0, 5, 0. Have we dealt with multiplying decimals? So why is this unacceptable? Oh, how many decimal places do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to pull my answer 25.9. Now, I could put 05, and that's okay if you did, but I'm going to round my answers to the nearest tenth. So is that okay? Or do you want to – okay. You can do an actual or you can do the rounded. But is this my answer, 25.9? Equals, equals C. Equals – and that's it? It's actually Linear more time. 20 – oh. 25.9. You can put equals C, but I want that unit. Most important part. 25 centimeters is like that. 25 or 26 about. 26 centimeters or 26 miles. Is there a difference there? Okay, you better tell me what it is. Yep. Or feet even. Um, why didn't we do this? Wasn't this the time the... Circumference. Mm -hmm. So what's circumference again, guys? The distance around the circle. circle. So how big is that circle? It's not very big at all. So you just Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do B, and then um, we'll talk about something else. B. On B, did they draw me something? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they draw me a circle. Sometimes you'll get a drawing, sometimes you won't. All right, they say use 22 over 7 for pi. On that circle that they drew me, what piece of info do they give me? Oh, wait, the radius. They gave me the radius. What's the radius worth? Nine and one third, sorry, inches, thank you, inches, so not very big. Okay, which form of the circumference formula am I going to use? So I have my two options, pi times diameter or circumference equals two times pi times radius. Which one? Diameter. See, if they give me the radius, I'm going to use the radius form. I'm not using this one. Um, you can but not advice. And then what form of pi am I going to use? 22 over 7. It's said to use 22 over 7, so use it. Okay, so here I have circumference equals, I'm going to put 2 over 1, okay? And then what's pi? 22 over 7. And then the radius is 9 and 1 third, but what should I do to that before I start multiplying? I must change it into an improper, improper fraction. So... What's 9 and 1 third changed into an improper fraction? 28 over 3. 28 over 3. Good. 28 over 3. Uh, again, if you're not, like if you don't know that, that's okay. But how did we get it? We do 3 times 9, 27 plus 1, 28. And then you just write the common denominator, the same denominator. Huh. Yeah, this is hard. I, in fact, I, man, 22 times 2 and then. What can you do before you start multiplying? Uh, well, you can simplify the fraction. Ah, okay. Every time you use the ratio uh, format, you always have to put the, like, 2 over 1. You don't have to, but the reason I do that is because a lot of people, like, if you just put 2 and then all this, they, they start multiplying 2 by the top and by the bottom, right, or they do. When you have um, the ratio format, you still have to use the 2. Yes, yeah, you have to use that 2 there. In this case, yeah, this case. All right. Can anything cancel before I multiply? Because 2 times 22 times 28, oh my goodness, that's hard. Anything cancel? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, 7 goes in 7 once, 7 goes in 28, 4 times. Oh, thank you so much. That would have been tough. All right, now do you have to multiply 2 times 22 times 4 first? No. Can you do 2 times 4? 
times 22? Can you do 4 times 22 times 2? Doesn't matter. You figure it out. Tell me what you get. You do your way. Some of you do, I'll just do 2 times 22 times 4. I could do it. Some of you do 4 times 2 times 22. And then there are other ways. All right. So you should get blah, which blah should be the same if you did it right. Okay. What's 2 times 22 times 4? Yes, ma'am? Yeah, it's 176. And what's 1 times 1 times 3? Three? 3. So I get 176 over 3. Is that my final answer? No, because no, I need to put it into a mixed fraction. Yeah, proper fraction or mixed number. So how do I get this? I just divide. I do 176 divided by 3. 3 goes into 17. That's 15. 3 goes into 26. That's 24 with a remainder of 2. 58 and so 58 inches. and 2 thirds odd. Ah, thank you. 58 and 2 thirds inches. Yeah, and you can put equal C. I'm not super picky on equal C, but yes, you can. And that's totally cool. Yes, ma'am? Um, I did just um, 22 times 4. I just did that. Yeah. Um, and then I did 22. So you got 88 times 2? Yes. Uh -huh. And you should have gotten... Okay, yeah, you should still get that, but you, you could do it in any order. Oh, wait, I did get that. I just... Oh, okay, so you know what you did? Okay, that's fine, as long as you know what you did. Um, it, it, honestly, it goes faster when you don't know, because there's a like, boom, it comes up. Um, on example number two, it says Earth's circumference is approximately 25,000 miles. What's the distance around the Earth, according to that problem? 25,000 miles, okay? They want to know what's the diameter and a practical way of doing it. So what's D? Drill that hole all the way, figure out how long that takes. That's the practical way of doing it. But the better way to do it is what? Uh, it's actually something I'm not requiring you to do. 25,000 miles. Oh, you're getting there. Uh, how do you find the circumference of a, um, of a circle? Use what formula? Times, okay, you're getting it, equals pi times diameter, right? So I'm trying to find this out. What is the circumference according to this problem? So they already gave me the circumference. What are they trying to find out? What is the diameter? So how would I figure it out? I divide both sides by? Two pi, or two pi. Just pi, divide both sides by pi. Oops, sorry, that's not pi. Um, I'm not requiring you to do this. Basically, it's 25,000 divided by 3, right? Isn't pi about 3? That's how you'd figure it out. And you can figure it out more exact if you did it. That's just an example of how I don't have to measure the earth. I just have to know pi. And I have to know one piece of this info, and then I'm good. That's it. Is that on our homework? No. No, that, that's not on your homework, but well, that's one I of these. We're just doing circumference. You're just trying to find circumference. All right, so your homework... Uh, is 11 through 21 odd. Page 343. <laughs> 343. And what I'll do is um, with the few minutes that we have left, um, I'm going to work out 11 and 13, and if you don't know how to do it, you can follow me. If you do know how to do it, you just go past me. Uh, yeah, let me do that. Yeah, 11 through 21. No, you don't have to draw it. If they draw it for you, just uh, use it. If not, there you go. Use the info there. Okay. Yeah, you still have a few minutes.